Landscape photography can be a wonderful and fulfilling journey. It can be disappointing at times as well, uh, heartbreaking when things just don't go right. But I thought today what I might do is reflect upon some of the most important things that I've learned for myself during my journey in landscape photography. Now these aren't things about what gear to use. These aren't things about techniques. They're more about fundamental philosophies and ways of looking at photography that I think can help not only in producing better images, but just in making photography a lot more fulfilling. So let's get started. So the very first thing I think is really important is focus. And I'm not talking about the camera here, I'm talking about ourselves. So minimizing distractions to let us get into that state of flow, that state where we're completely present in the moment. We're not thinking about other things that are going on. We're just focusing completely on where we are right now. If somebody comes up and talks to you while you're in the middle of taking a photo, it pulls your attention away and you lose that connection that you have with your subject. And uh, it, basically it makes it harder to really get in and get the, I guess, the emotions and the the feeling, if that makes sense, of, of what it is you're trying to convey. So put your phone on, do not disturb. Try to go places where there aren't so many people around and uh, try to either go out by yourself or if you are going out with other people, choose people who aren't going to uh, talk to you the whole time and distract you from what you're doing. Okay, the second thing is to take your time. Now, I know sometimes we go out there and we don't have a lot of time because either, you know, we've got other things to do, we've got to get to work, or maybe we're there for sunrise and sunset and the light's just fantastic and we have to rush and that's all good. But if you can, if you've got the time, take the time, slow down, Stop even for a few seconds just to think, connect to where you are. And usually that, that little extra time you take can make a lot of difference in, uh, in really refining and, and getting great compositions. So I tend to use a tripod a lot because it helps me slow down. I can be a bit too snap happy if I'm just hand holding. Other people don't seem to have that problem, so it really depends on you. Now, I started my photography back in the year 2000. I think I bought my first SLR, which was this cute little Canon EOS 300. And one of the things I found about film was that because you tend to be a little bit stingier with it, uh, at sunrise and sunset, I just find one composition and sit on it. And while I don't necessarily think that made me get better photographs in the end, what it did do was allow me the time and the space to actually really experience the place that I was in, to really be present to the sunset or sunrise that's happening, which sometimes with digital, we can get so caught up in taking photos that we don't take that time out. So that's something uh, I'd like to take back into my digital. But the wonderful thing about digital, of course, is you get the immediate feedback. So make sure you take advantage of that. But review your photos while you're there. Check that your focus is okay. Have a think about the composition and if there's something that's not quite right or not working and how you might be able to improve things. Now, the third thing is just get out there. It can be really easy to fall into the trap of only wanting to go out and shoot when the conditions are good. But the problem is we don't have crystal balls. Yeah, we have weather apps, but they're not always that accurate. And it can be really difficult to actually predict accurately what the weather's gonna do. So 
If you only ever wait until you think the conditions are gonna be perfect, too often you can just not go out at all. And what you need to actually get the really good conditions is to go out a lot. The more you go out, the better your chances are of hitting those times when the sun breaks through those clouds and you get those fantastic moments, or the times when there's the mist comes through and the atmosphere is fantastic. And yes, when you go out often, you will have times where the light is dull or it's harsh or it just doesn't seem to work. But what it means is when those absolute moments of magic happen, you'll be out there to take advantage of them. Now the fourth thing is don't give up. We've all been out there surely on days that it looks dull and boring and uninteresting and you think, yeah, nothing's gonna come of this. But then all of a sudden, whoa, the sun comes out and it's amazing. Now, last week in my last video, I stayed out even though the light was really flat and the hope I'd get one of those days and it didn't come off. But the thing is, you don't have that crystal ball, as I said, you just don't know. So if you're not out there, you can't get it. So you might as well, if you go out for a sunrise or you go out for a sunset, you might as well wait it out, wait through the whole thing. And sometimes you can end up coming away with an image in less than ideal light that you actually end up liking anyway. And if it's somewhere that you're local, then uh, you've always got places that you can scout out and come back to at a later point in time. Now, something that has been really, really important for me to learn over my journey in photography is don't judge yourself by your failures. We always have photographs that we take that don't work, that we think might be fantastic and they just don't turn out. It happens to everybody. You need to realize that even the most brilliant photographers out there take bad photos. It was one of the best learning experiences I had back in the early days. I used to spend all this time on a site called photo.net and one of the photographers I really admired uh, one day put up an article where he showed every photo that he'd taken on a roll of film. And it, it was eye-opening to me to see that amongst some really great images, there was also some really ordinary ones. And it's, it's really important to remember, your failures are fantastic for you to learn from, to look at, to say, what is it that didn't work about this? What can I do better with next time? Don't judge yourself by them though. If you want to see how you've improved, it's no good thinking, is this latest photo I've taken better than this other one in the past? Judging one photo isn't going to help you with that. Instead, look at a broad range of your work over the space of like a year, the past year, look at your best stuff and see how that compares to the best stuff you took a year ago. I guarantee if you've been out shooting, it will have gotten better. So yeah, don't be a harsh critic of your, your failures. They're fantastic to learn from, but don't let them get you down. And the sixth thing is to shoot for yourself. If you are there fulfilling your vision and you're finding it satisfying and you're enjoying what you output, there will be people who love your work. Now there's gonna always be people who don't as well, but ultimately, ultimately, you're the person that needs to feel proud of what they've done. You're the person that needs to feel like this hobby of photography is fulfilling to you. It doesn't matter how much adulation you get if you're not feeling satisfied in yourself because you're creating work that doesn't properly reflect you and uh, what you're going for. So don't worry too much about the detractors if they're out there. 
If you're happy with what you do, then it's all good. And the last thing, which anybody who's followed this channel for a while is probably going to be able to guess what it is, and that's to get out there and enjoy yourself. To me, that's the number one most important thing. And if I put that at the top of my list, it doesn't matter if I come home and I don't have any fantastic photos, I've still had a great time. I've still got to experience a lot of the beauty in the world, even if I haven't managed to translate it that well into a photograph. And uh, I've still been able to get that restorative part of your, your soul that comes through from being present and taking photos, which I'm sure you can all con connect with. So I think if, for me, if that's my number one, I probably take better photos by focusing more on enjoying myself rather than putting on the pressure to myself that I need to go out and take brilliant photos and the enjoyment's secondary to that. And that's why my channel exists is to be able to share authentic landscape photography stories with you. The good, the bad, the ugly, and the ridiculous. I could be a touch wet at this point. <laughs> Let's try that again. Oops. <laughs> Shit. There's <laughs> it's a big hole. <laughs> Hopefully, regardless of what they are, they're all something to be enjoyed. And speaking of a time that I really enjoyed, here's one from earlier in this year when I was down at Corumban Beach and the weather wasn't exactly what I was looking for, but it ended up being quite spectacular and probably one of the most enjoyable mornings I think I've ever had down at the beach.